Hey yo, and welcome to another episode of Advanced Glitch Building. Today I'm going to go over a method of creating circles from square and triangle floors using polygon scaffolding of 5, 7, 9, and 11 sides. Here's a quick rundown of the number of sides you can accomplish. Using a 5-sided polygon in square floors, you can get circles with 20, 40, 80, and 160 sides. With triangle parts, you can get circles with sides of 15, 30, 60, and 120 sides. Using square floors with the 7-sided polygon, you can get circles with sides of 14, 28, 56, and 112 sides. And using triangle parts, you can get circles with the size of 21 sides, 42, and 84. With the 9-sided polygon using square floors, you can get circles with sides of 18, 36, 72, and 144 sides. Using triangle parts, you can get circles with sides of 27, 54, and 108 sides. And finally, with the 11-sided polygon using square floors, you can get circles with 22, 44, and 88 sides. And using triangle parts, you can get circles with sides of 33, 66, and 99. Now, once you know how many number of sides you want to your circle, you will know exactly what part you're going to be using and which polygon you're going to need. But first, you'll need a center point. So grab yourself a floor, place a garage door on either side of it, then reverse wire glitch from either side of that and pull to one of the outlets on the garage door. Then reverse wire glitch from the opposite side and pull to the base of that wire you just made. Then you can delete everything except for the level wire. Next, I'm gonna show you how to make each of the different polygons, the five, seven, nine, and 11 sided ones. First, we'll start with the five sided polygon. Glitch yourself a full size floor piece at the base of your wire. Then grab yourself a small paving Place it at the top, duplicate your large floor, then adjacency glitch to a small floor at the position above the paving, then count two spaces to the right and reverse wire glitch, pulling to your center point, and do the same from the left. Once you've done this, you can go ahead and delete everything except for the wires. Then blender glitch from the right side that you just did with a large floor, wire glitching it into the center point. Then flip your camera around so that wire is at the bottom. Then repeat the process again. Grab a small paver, duplicate your floor, adjacency to a small floor, then count two to the right and two to the left, pulling to your center point. Then again, delete everything. Blender glitch with a large floor from the right-hand side. Repeat the process to get the last of your five wires for your pentagonal scaffolding. Next, I'm gonna show you how to make the seven-sided polygon. Starting with your center wire, glitch in a small paving at the bottom, build four more up from there, then build four to the right of that. On the fifth one, reverse wire glitch and pull the wire and connect it to the base of your starting wire. Then you can go ahead and delete all the small pavings. Then blender glitch a small paving from the end of that new wire to your center point and repeat the process. Do this six times going around clockwise and you will have a seven-sided polygon. Next, for the nine-sided polygon, we're gonna start with a full-size floor at the bottom of your wire. Above it, adjacency to a small floor, then go to your build menu, grab yourself a half-short wall, place it on the right side of that small floor, grab yourself a full-size triangle, place it in the bottom position and adjacency from that to a small triangle. Then, duplicate the half-short wall, place it at the top end of that small triangle, grab yourself another large triangle, Place it in the right position here, then grab yourself a full length short wall, place it on the left or right side, doesn't matter. What you need to do then is grab a extruded wall cap and reverse wire glitch from the far tip of that triangle, pulling back to your center point. At that point, you can go ahead and delete everything and then blender glitch from the top of that new wire back to your center point with a full size floor and repeat the process another eight times. This will get you a nine-sided polygon of scaffolding for your circle making. Lastly, for the 11-sided polygon, we're going to start out with a large floor at the base of our wire, grab a half short wall, place it on the right side of the top, grab yourself a large triangle, place it on the right position here, then adjacency to a small triangle, then grab yourself two small floors and place them next to each other, spanning from the right to the left here, then count five small triangles up from the top position here. Then return to the build menu, grab yourself a full length short wall and reverse wire glitch, grabbing a point at the very tip of that triangle and pull back to your center. Go ahead and delete everything. Then as before, blender glitch a large floor from the tip of that new wire into your center point and repeat the process another 10 times. Once done, this will give you an 11 sided polygon from which we can use as a scaffolding to build our circles later on. 
So now all we have to do is make the circles. Now I'm going to show you the methods of how to do this from square parts and from triangle parts. I'm going to be showing you on the five-sided polygon, but keep in mind that this method and the series of glitches that you'll be doing will work for any of the polygons regardless of the sides. The method stays the same. We'll talk more about this as I go through each step. Now, using square parts on any of the polygons, Blender glitching from the outside of each of your wires and glitching the square floor part into the center will get you four times the number of sides that you have of your polygon scaffolding. So with the five-sided polygon, glitching square parts in there is going to get you 20 sides. With the seven-sided, it'll get you 28. With the nine-sided, 36. With the 11-sided, 44, and so on. Next, to double the number of sides to this circle, you're going to place full-size floors in a fanning motion on the outside of this circle. The number that you place one after the other next to each other is determined by the number of sides of your polygon that you started with. For this one, it'll be five. Once you have those five placed, you're going to reverse wire glitch from a large floor on the right-hand side of each of them and pull and blender glitch a large floor to your center. Then delete the one that you just pulled from and repeat the process until you've done it with all five of the floors you placed. This will double the number of sides of a five-sided polygonal circle made with square parts from 20 to 40. The process works exactly the same for all the other polygons. Next, you need to reverse wire from exactly half the distance between two of your starting wires, like this, get grabbing a wire one floor distance away. Next, you are going to reverse wire glitch from two spaces to the right of each of the five starting wires that you have, and then blender glitching large floors into that end of the wire that you just made halfway in between two of the points. Once you have done this, you are going to reverse wire glitch from each of the outside edges this second circle makes and blender glitch an additional floor piece into your center point. I would suggest after each pull, marking the one you just did so you don't lose your place. Next, returning with a large floor to each of your five starting wires, count two spaces to the left, reverse wire glitch and pull to your outside wire, then two spaces to the right, reverse wire glitch and blender glitch to your outside wire. Do this for each of the wires that you have for your starting polygon. Then, just like before, we're going to reverse wire glitch from each green stated outside point of this second circle and blender glitch an additional floor piece into our center. Completing this last step with a five-sided polygon as your starting scaffolding will get you a 160-sided circle. However, I will mention that this only works this well with the five-sided polygon and square parts. If you try this with the seven, nine, or 11-sided polygons, it does not work as well as your initial angles that you start with your polygon from are not perfect, and the game does not recognize the tiny, tiny distances between two sides and the distances in between them. Next, I'm going to show you the method for using triangle parts to build circles off of your different scaffoldings. Much like before, your first circle is simply going to be blender glitching from the outside of each of your wires of your scaffolding and blender glitching into the center. For the five-sided polygon, this will give you 15 sides. Next, to double the number of sides, again, we are going to place five triangles right next to each other, fanning from left to right on the outside of this circle. We are doing five because that is the number of sides that our first polygon started with. Next, we are going to reverse wire and blender more triangles in based on the right-hand side of each of those triangles. This will give us 30 sides. Once that's done, you can delete those outside triangles. Next, you need to reverse wire glitch from one position to the left and the right of each of your five starting wires, blender glitching an additional triangle part into the center. If you start at one wire and then move counterclockwise to the next wire, 
you should be able to see exactly what position you need to be reverse wire glitching from easily each time. Again, that's one space to the left and one space to the right of each of your starting wires. And again, this is the same for each of the polygons if you are making circles out of triangle parts. Once all that is done, you will have yourself a 60-sided circle at your center. Now, again, we can take a fourth step here and double that from 60 to 120, but I would only suggest doing this fourth step with the five-sided polygons with triangle parts. As much like I said before, doing any more with that, with the other polygons, the 7, 9, and 11-sided, will result in snap points being too close together and the game not being able to differentiate between them. With that said, to again double the number of sides to the circle you have now, you are going to take the number of sides to that circle you are now doubling and divide it by 3. We have 60 sides right now, divided by 3, that is 20. So we are going to take square floor parts and place 20 of them in a row from left to right around the edge of our circle. Then, after that, we are going to grab a triangle part and reverse wire glitch from the right hand side of each of these square parts we just placed, blender glitching another triangle into our center. Once you do that, you have essentially doubled the number of triangle parts in your center and therefore doubled the number of sides to your circle, up to 120. As you can see, the more number of sides you add to this central circle, the less accurate it gets. But the method works. So there you have it a bunch of polygons and a bunch of circles you can build off of them. Very, very specific number of sides, but it can be done for any of you that have a need for these specific number of sides. Let me know what you think of this method in the comments and uh, let me know what you guys want to learn how to do in future tutorials. Uh, see you next time. Hit a like, subscribe.